everybody. I'm Chris. Let's talk about some list formatting and stuff, right? So the first thing I want to do is kind of talk about formatting in general, right? So when we say list formatting, uh, we mean column formatting. We mean view formatting. Uh, we even mean uh, some form customization, right? So we can do some things where we can make columns conditionally show or high, use the same kind of expression syntax. We can add a header and a footer. Uh, so we have lots and lots of things we can do. And there's, in fact, there's even multiple types of view formats. So it can be easy to get kind of lost in a sea of this, and there are some things we can do to improve it as we get through that confusion. So let's take a look at what formatting is first. So I've got an exciting screenshot of uh, you know a pretty basic list on things with uh, my Warrior Horses site, and here you can see there's a column format everywhere. Let's take a look what makes that up. All right, so the first thing we've got is a surface. So whether that's your list view, you're inside Microsoft Lists, you've got it in the list web part, et cetera, that's here. So then on top of that, we've got things like kind of a standard UI. So in general, this is going to be your headers. If you've got groups, it's going to be the various groups in here or aggregate, you know, all of these pieces here. And then you have your actual data, right? So these are the list items coming back row by row. And there's some pretty standard ways these get formatted, right? So we've got a, uh, a multi-person select field. Here you can see kind of the out of the box, put each name on its individual line and so on, right? So we've got this as a number column, but it's formatted as a percent. So SharePoint gives us a lot kind of out of the box or Microsoft lists, right? So then if we want to take that a little further, we can start to apply things called column formats, right? So each one of these columns, um, you can apply this to the individual list field, or you can apply it at the site column level so that wherever that column shows up, it has this fancy format. And what that does is it gets applied to every item as each row is rendered, right? So as each one hump happens, your format's evaluated and applied, and it's a nice kind of overlay while still giving you that same surface and giving you the standard UI so you can do your filtering and your sorting and everything else. And as you can see here, I've put a column format on every single column, but you can certainly mix those with kind of the standard and column formats and so on. Okay, now the next layer on top of that is view formats. Now there's one that plays nicely with all of this, and it's kind of a simple one. And that's called the row class. So when you apply a view format, you can apply what's called an additional row class. And here you just provide an expression and you say, whatever my expression is, um, apply a class, right? So we could say every row that has assigned to equals to me, make it purple in this case, right? So the nice thing with these row classes is, again, you get your standard UI, you get all of your data flowing through and whether that's got a column format or not, it's just kind of kind of sit over on top of that. So all of this kind of combines together to create some pretty cool layers and give you a lot of options. Now you can actually go even further than that. Woo! And that's where you're going to control this entire rendering space. And that's a view format. So now this type of view format, unlike the row class, uh, will override everything. Right. So this is going to override all of your column formats. It's going to override any row classes you want. And it's going to you're going to control the entire rendering here. Now you can do cool things here because this is applied at the view itself. The views themselves can have multiple displays. You can have a gallery style view where you can have both a view format here and what we call tile props internally. It's called gallery when you go into the little view menu. And you can apply formats there, which is really cool. And even if you want to, so we still got the standard UI here, we can go even further and override that standard UI with our own. All right, so we can, now we're doing some fancy things to kind of detect the first item and we're building our own kind of columns, so we can move that entirely. So you can see lots of customization options here, and you can really layer your views. And the nice thing is these are going to show up on all of these services. So, and it's going to look the same, whether it's in Microsoft Lists, inside the app, or it's in a web part. Uh, I'm going to say most of the time, 99% of the time, it's going to look exactly the same, and that's really, really powerful. You can do a lot with that. But there are a couple of issues here. So you can see here, like in this format, I've taken title, right? Now I've actually written out the you know, title and then I've taken the field values from the title column and I've shown them here. Now what happens is, what if someone comes along with like title? That's not really, you know, that doesn't really apply here. Let's call that like, um, I don't know, standard ID or whatever it is, right? They rename the title column. Shock, why would they do this, right? And all they've done is they've changed the display name, nothing about your format breaks, except now it says title Whereas in every other view of this, it doesn't say title, right? And so that can be a little confusing. So when someone changes the display name, you've got to go and update all of your view formats where you've overridden that. And that can be a real pain. This is especially true in a gallery view where you're definitely not going to have this kind of standard UI. 
and you're oftentimes kind of putting those labels out there. Or what if you've got another problem, right? So I have this really cool column format. If we go back, right, and it's take all these, took all these faces, you know, and it put them in nice little circles and kind of took care of understanding there was more than you know three here that could display. So this is called the face file, and that's cool. What if I want that to show up in say here, right? I want it to show up here. Well, traditionally, I've got to go and copy that whole format, and then I've got to nest it inside here. And that works, and we've got a few formats that do that. But what if you've got you know, pretty complex logic? Say you're showing an icon based on status that also has to look at the completion field, right? So it's got various colors, and it has icons, and it's all pretty complex. And now someone says, you need to copy that in multiple view formats. And now someone says, yeah, we actually want to use you know, icon XYZ instead of icon YZX, right? So now you've got to go and you've got to fix that everywhere, and it's very easy to make those mistakes or if they change those colors. And so you get into this kind of layering issue, right? So let's take a look at how we can solve that a little bit. So let's head over to our exciting Warrior Horses list site. Now we're going to go to that same list, and it's almost like I just screenshotted this thing. So I'm just going to take this. So this is a standard list, no formats at all are applied, right? So we've got that kind of out-of-the-box rendering, and very quickly, I'm going to show you how to apply some formats. All of these are samples that are available. So you could call them settings, format this column. All right, you get some options here. I'm going to go to advanced mode, and I'm just going to paste ones I've got in another window. All right, so now I've got check boxes. And let's grab a couple others of these. We won't do them all. And we'll go to title. All right, and we'll go to advanced mode. And here we're crossing things out if they're marked as complete. And then we've got a progress field and percentage is okay, but you know we want to show that to, we can just that kind of data bars. In this case, I'm actually going to show these data bars. Ooh, pretty yellow. And let's just grab one more just for for fun because this is a complex one. That's that one we mentioned, which is called the face pile. Again, all of these are samples that are available to you for free, which is not face like I'm doing. So no, I didn't hit save on the other one, did I? My yellow. Someone says yellow. I swear I turned off notifications, but uh, I guess I lied. So by swearing, I don't know what I've done now. Okay, let's preview that. Let's save it. Okay, so here's the idea, right? So now we've got column formats. That's really cool. All right, if I come here and I create a new view, and we'll just call it magical, right? Doesn't matter. And we create that. And you can see, oh, I've got other columns that are a part of that. So I've got other formats. Those all kind of show up here. Um, and that's great, right? So let me go back to my all items, and that all works. Now, if I want to apply one of those row class formats we talked about, and I would come in here and I would go to Format Current View. I'm going to go to Advanced, right, just so I can paste one in here. And in this case, let's grab one of these. Does I remember which one it is in my little list over here? Ah, and this one, again, this is also a sample. All of these are samples that are available. This is a little weird. Well, if you look right here, it's just looking inside this assign to column and saying, hey, if it includes me, then, uh, you know, make it, uh, I think it's going to be red or yellow. Yellow, right, and red on hover. So the idea here is, is this beautiful? No. In fact, I would really question whether or not it's a good idea to combine yellow and yellow here. But the whole point is that I'm able to apply a view format, custom logic, um, and samples are available. It's in a GitHub repo, but you don't have to do any kind of fancy coding. You just cut and paste. Okay. So the idea here, right, is now I've got all of these layered, and that's really cool, but this applies to a specific view. So if I close that and I go back to the new view we created, Magical, right, I don't have that anymore, but I could do things like uh, format this view, and I could set up my, you know, my own thing right here. So in this case, I'm just going to just grab some really exciting format. Just to show what we can do. So we're overriding the whole thing. So instead of a row class, now we're doing a row formatter. And in this case, we're just putting a div, and this is a title, and then the actual value of the title. So if we preview that, wow, what an exciting format. We have many more complicated samples and everything else for that, which I encourage you to look at. But what I want to point out here is what we can do. So just going to keep it simple is instead of saying title with a colon, right? We mentioned this idea of what if someone comes in here and they, let's save that. They come in here and they say column settings and they go to, you know, what is it? Rename, right? And they're going to call this, you know, my special column, right? And they name it that. 
Oh no! Now we got to go back and we got to update the format here. If we updated, you know, we use title anywhere else, and we got to actually search inside this JSON that we just cut and paste from GitHub. We didn't think we were going to have to actually touch this stuff. Well, the good news is we can do fancy things like instead of referencing title, we can say um, exclamation point, so the dollar sign, grab that internal name of the column dot display. So this is called field metadata. All right, let me close that. Let's preview that. Bam. So now by using instead of a dollar sign like we normally do to reference uh, internal columns, right? We're referencing the field metadata. Now, right now, the only property available in the field metadata is this display name, and it is case sensitive. So this is really, really cool, right? So if I hit save on that, and I come in here and someone says, I'm going to rename that again, right? And they're going to name it, you know, horses. Is that how you spell horses? Sure you do. All right, they name it horses. Bam, our format takes care of that, which is awesome. So the nice thing with that is now these formats can apply all over the place, right? So I don't need to know anything about this list other than it has a title column, and I don't care what you call your title column. We can now put this same thing everywhere. But what about I had some cool stuff, right? I had some displays, right? In this case, I had this kind of crossed out look. So well, how do we get that everywhere? Well, good news. I wouldn't have told you all this if there wasn't a way to do that as well. So in this case, we're going to remove everything out of this element. Instead of showing the title value, now we're going to say column formatter reference. Ooh, very catchy, right? And in this case, we're going to use that those brackets with a dollar sign, and we're going to just reference whatever. So in this case, we're going to say title, right? So we want however the format would be applied to the title field, put it inside my view format. Preview. Maybe I didn't do that right. Let me look at that again. <laughs> Uh, let's not do title. Let's do assigned to. How's that? Assigned to. All right, so we'll preview that. Boom. So we'll just do that. So look at this. Instead of taking that whole format and sticking inside our view format and bloating it there and having copied and pasted code everywhere that we got to go update, I can now just simply say, hey, for this element, the whole thing needs to be just whatever that column format would be normally. Now, there's some caveats, right? You can't uh, do some inheritance and some other stuff, but this is huge. So this takes away all of the kind of maintenance and stuff between all of these layers and makes it much easier to kind of open up holes. So if we jump back to our, aha, right here. So the idea is here, we're actually opening up holes inside our format. So instead of this, we cut a hole and we just bring in whatever that format is for the column, right? Whether that's the site column, you've got your complex logic on like say a due date that's looking at other fields and you don't wanna put all that in there. Well, you could just sub that out to the column format. That way it's consistent between all of your views, whether you've applied a view format or not, or you've got a gallery or not, you've got the same display by using that column format or reference. And in the same regard, if you wanna show uh, you know, certain field names, you can use that display name. So huge, 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 it's exciting. So here's that column format of reference. Again, you give the internal column name and you're gonna use that dollar sign. So this is exactly how we reference the value normally, right? A square bracket, dollar sign, another square bracket, internal name right here. Uh, but instead, all you do is put it inside your little squiggly braces, column format of reference with that. And bam, it works. Now you can technically use this in your column formats as well. Um, I'm not sure exactly why you would, but I'm sure there are reasons, right, if you wanted to wrap all that up. So, and then next thing is that field metadata. Right now, it's just that display name. Thing that might trip you up is that the period goes inside the square brackets and the exclamation point right there instead of a dollar sign. But these are hugely powerful for making your formats, um, which can get out of hand a little bit. You know, it's easy to get a little complicated there. Uh, but keep them all consistent between them while giving you that flexibility to really provide that kind of wrapper and outer surface. All right, that's it for me. All right, go ahead and check out our full documentation here. Someone asked about those samples. Uh, it's just like this, but instead it's PHP instead of SharePoint. Got to update that. I'm sure David's pasted the correct link. And that's all I got. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, like always, a great demo.